Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S5 5056 Junie B. Jones that Mini Jim's birthday. Chapter 1 Eating Cake. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B and that's all. B is my bestest letter on account of my favorite food starts with that guy. Its name is birthday cake. We had the delicious stuff at school today. That's because Polly Allen Puffer turned six years old and his mother brought chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream and chocolate milk to room nine. She's a chocolate nut, I think. The party was very fun, except for Paul Hill and Puffer got all wound up. And he put cake on his head, and then he laughed till milk came out his nose. That is called nose milk. I told my bestest friend named Lucille. Lucille is a little lady. You, she said, I wish I didn't even see that nose milk. Because now my stomach feels upset. And I can eat the rest of my cake. And so I will throw both our cakes in the trash can for us. Then I picked up our cakes and I hurried up to the trash can. I looked all around me, very careful. Then I quick ducked behind the trash can and I stuffed both those cakes right in my mouth. I rubbed my tummy really happy. Now all I need is some milk to wash it down with, I said. That's when I saw some milk sitting on a table all by itself. I picked it up and drank it all gone. Mmm, I said that hit the spot. Just then I heard a voice, Junie B. Jones. Why are you out of your seat, was my teacher. Her name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. has eyes like a hawk. What are you doing over there? She asked me. I'm sharing people's cake and milk. I explained, except for they aren't actually here at the moment. Mrs. rolled her eyes way back in her head. I smiled very soon. Guess what? When I have my birthday party, I'm going to bring cake and milk too. Plus also, I might bring a, a Beanie Weenie casserole because that'll be a nice change of pace, I think. Just then I skipped over to Polly Allen, Puffer's mother. Excellent cake, madam. My compliments to the chief, I said, and me and her did a high five. When she didn't actually put her hand out, and so mostly I just slapped her on the on the arm. After that, I skipped back to my seat. Lucy was finishing her chocolate ice cream. She had a chocolate mustache on her lip. I did a frown at her. Lucy, I'm surprised at you. So I said, oh, you're not eating that ice cream like a little lady, and so I will show you how. Then I quick dipped my spoon into Lucille's ice cream. See, I said, see how I'm taking dainty bites off of this stuff? Only just then a dainty bite of chocolate ice cream slipped off my spoon and it plopped into Lucille's lap. She dumped out of a chair. Oh no, she hollered. Now look what you did. You spilled ice cream on my brand new dress and my Nana just brought this to me from New York City. And it costed $95 plus tax. Mrs. hurried up to my table. She had a wet sponge to clean Lucille's dress. No, no, don't, said Lucille. You can't put water on this because this dress is made of satin and satin is dry clean only. Mrs. made angry eyes at me. I did a gurp. <clears throat> Who knew? I said real soft. Then I put my head down on my table and I covered up with my arms. So that's called the laying low. And laying low is what you do if you know what's good for you. <clears throat> Chapter 2, tapping on that Jim's head. After the <clears throat> party, me and my other bestest friend rode home on the bus. Her name is Grace. Me and the Grace take turns sitting next to the window. That is good sports of bus, I think. Except for sometimes you forget those uh, whose turn it is. Then we have to settle it with our fist. This time it was that Grace's turn to sit next to the window. Guess what? I don't even care if you sit there today, I told her. 
because eating all that cake made me in a happy mood, the gray smile. Me too, she said, eating the cake <clears throat> made me in a happy mood too. Yeah, only you can be as happy as me, I explained, because I had two cakes, and you just had one, that Grace did a frown. That's okay, Grace, don't be upset. I said, because when I have my birthday, I will invite you to my house, and then you can have two cakes too. Oh boy, she said, I know it is, oh boy. I said back, plus also, you will get your very own paper cup with M&Ms in it. <clears throat> Ooh, yum, I love M&Ms, said that Grace. Me too. I love M&M's too, I said. On account of the chocolate, doesn't melt on your hands. Just the colors melt on your hands and that's all. I smiled real big. And here's another good thing, Grace. <clears throat> when you come to my party, you will get your very own party, party hat. And we'll play Twister. Plus also, we'll play that game where you shout bingo. Only I keep on forgetting the name of that one. Just then a mini boy named Jim jumped up from his seat. Bingo, stupid, he shouted. Its name is B-I-N-G-O, what a moron. Who'd even want to come to a stupid party like yours? He made his voice real loud so everybody could hear. At my house, I have a cool birthday party, he said. Like that year, my party was named Clowning Around, and we had... Two clowns from the circus, and they made balloon animals and did magic tricks. I leaned way close to his face. So, I said, I don't even like clowns. Clowns are not normal people. Plus, my very own grandpa, Frank Miller, can make balloon animals too. Except uh, for they all look like uh, winner, winner dogs. Only he's working on it. The gym wasn't even listening to me. He just kept on talking about his parties. This year, my party is named Old McDonald's Farm, and a real farmer is bringing a petting Jew right to my front yard, and he's going to bring a lamb, and a goat, and a burro, and some rabbits. And he's also bringing a real live pony for us to ride. I put my hands on my waist. Yeah, well, too bad for you, I said, because I saw all about ponies on TV. A pony is to buck you off their backs. Then they they stumble you into the ground and kill you to death. So, I wouldn't even come to your stupid dumb party in a zillion billion years. Good, hollered the gym. I'm glad because my birthday is this coming Saturday and tomorrow I'm bringing invitations to every single person in room 9. Only not to you. You are the only one in the whole class I am not bringing an invitation to. So there. Then he did a big huh right in my face, and he sat back down in his seat. Meanwhile, I just kept on standing and standing there, because something has gone a little bit wrong here, I think. I tapped on his head. Yeah, only here is the thing I said. I didn't actually know you were having a party on Saturday, and so good news, I think I can make it. No, shouted that mini boy. You're not coming, now go away. I tapped on him again. Yeah, only I was just kidding about the ponies, I said. They hardly even stumble, stumble you, probably. I don't care, stop bothering me, he shouted. I stood on my tippy toes and looked at his head. Love your head today, I said. The gym sweated at me. Get away from me, he hollered. You're not coming to my party and that's final. Just then a big lump came in my throat. A big lump is what comes before crying. It hurt to swallow. I sat down and hid it my face in my sweater. Darn it, I said. Because I think I really would have enjoyed myself at that thing. Then my bestest friend named Grace put her arm around me and she patted me real gentle. She let me sit next to the window. Chapter 3, Very Slumping. I walked home from the bus stop, very slumping. Very slumping is when your shoulder just said, your head can hold up that good. Grandma Miller was in the nursery. She babysits me and my baby brother in the afternoon. His name is Ollie. I love him a real lot, except I wish he didn't live at my actual house. Grandma Miller was rocking him in the rocking chair. I tried to climb up there too. 
on the grandma said, hold your horses at me. Yeah, only I need to rock very bad, I explained. On account of a mean boy is having a birthday party on Saturday. And he's inviting everyone in room nine, only not me. I'm the only one who's not going. Grandma Miller did a sad face. Children can be so cruel, she said. Just wait till I get the baby to sleep. Then you and I will talk about it, okay? And so that's how come I crossed my arms. And I tapped my foot and I waited and waited for that baby to go to sleep. And his eyes kept on staying wide open. Hold them closed with your fingers, Grandma, I told her. Heavens no, she said, and she kept right on rocking him. So finally I got tired of waiting and I went to my room. I crawled underneath my cover. I crawled way down to the bottom of my sheets. It's very muffly down there. You can say mean stuff and no one can hear you. Here is all the stuff I hate, I said. First, I hate that mini gym. Then I hate clowns. And old MacDonald had a farmer. Plus I hate rabbits and burrows and bunnies. And guess what else? We didn't actually need a baby at this house. Only no one even consulted me. Just then, I heard a knock on my door. Junibi, it's grandma, honey. Ollie finally went to sleep. She came in and lifted up my cupboards. I called your mother and told her what happened at school, she said. I picked up, I peeked up at her. And so she can, can she fix it, I asked. Can I go to the birthday party now? Grandma Miller held her arms to me. She pulled me out of my cover. Your mother is going to talk to you about it when she gets home, she said. Meanwhile, why don't you and I have a little fun? Let's read a book, okay? What kind of story would you like to hear? I thought and thought. I would like to hear a story about a little girl who doesn't get invited to mini boy's birthday. And so she sneaks to his house and she lets a wild pony out of the barn and then it stop, stumbles the boy into a flatty pancake and all the children pour maple syrup on that guy and they eat him for breakfast. Grandma Miller looked kind of sickish. You've got to stop worrying about that boy's party. He's just trying to get your gold. She said, just then my eyes got big and wide at her. Gold? What gold, Grandma? Do I have a gold? Is it a surprise gold? Are you keeping it a secret at your house? I jumped up and pulled her hand. Let's go get it. Wanna, Grandma? Let's go get my gold right now. Just then a great idea just popped in my head. I, I just thought of something. Grandma, you and me can bring my girl to my house. And then, I can have my very own birthday on Saturday. I will call it, come and pet my girl. And everyone in room nine will come to my party. They won't go to that mini gym. All of a sudden, the front door open was mother. I turned around to a spirit kick. Mother, mother, guess what? Guess what? Me and Grandma Miller are getting my girl. And I'm... And I'm having my very own birthday party on Saturday and all of room nine is going to be invited. Only not that gym I had. He's the only one not coming. So ha ha on him. Just then Grandma Miller sneaked out the front door with her sweater. I pulled on mother's arm. Come on, mother. Come on. I said, we have to go to the store and buy my invitation. Plus also we have to pick up the beanie weenies. Mother didn't come on. She sat down on the couch and smoothed my hair. Listen to me, Jenny B. I know Jim hurt your feelings today, but you, you can't have your birthday party on Saturday. Your birthday isn't until June, remember? And June is still months away. I know June is months away, I said. And so that's how come I'm moving my birthday sooner? Because months away will be too late. Mother picked me up and put me on her lap. I'm afraid you don't understand, honey. You just can't change the day you were born. No one can. It's impossible. I meant my voice, very whispering. Yeah, only here is a little secret. Nobody in room nine even knows when my birthday is. So I think we can pull it off. Mother did a little smile. She ruffled my hair. Sorry, honey, no can do. No can do, she said. Yes, I hollered. Yes, you can do. 
Because I have to have my birthday on Saturday or else I will be the only one who's not going to them mini genies. That's the saddest story I ever even heard of. Just my eyes got a little bit of wetty. Uh, get wet in them. Mother wiped my face with a the tissue then she hugged me real tight. She said the words, I'm sorry. More bad news. Grandma Miller just called. There is no gold. Chapter 4. Moving. The next morning I didn't get out of my bed. Not even when Mother called Time for breakfast. She came into my room. Didn't you hear me, Junie B? It's time to eat, she said. I looked up from my pillow. Yeah, only I'm not even hungry. Plus, also I'm moving today, I said. Mother smiled. You're moving? Huh? She asked. Exactly. Where will you be going? I did my shoulders up and down. Somewhere, I said. Somewhere where? She asked. Somewhere not here. That's where. She said, Mother hugged me. This is still about Jim's birthday party, isn't it? She said. You're still worried about not getting an invitation. No, I'm not, I said on the count of. I'm not even going to that school anymore. On the count of, I'm moving today. Mother shook her head and she went out of my room. She and Daddy did whispering in the hall. Pretty soon Daddy came in. He gave me a piggyback ride to the kitchen. And Mother made my favorite hot cereal. And she let me have all the brown sugar I wanted. She sat down next to me. You know, Jimmy B, Jimmy is only doing this to hurt your feeling. He just wants to get, get a reaction from you, that's all. Sure he does. And when someone is trying to hurt your feeling, there's only one way to get back at them. You have to pretend you don't care, said mother. You have to pretend you don't even want to go to that party. Because if you pretend you don't want to go, it'll take all the fun out of it for him. Daddy winked. You can do that, can you? He asked. You're the best little pretender in the entire world, just then my whole face lighted up. So that word gave me a great idea. Hey, I just figured out where I can move to. It's called it's a small world after all. And it's at Disneyland. Remember that? Daddy, it's where all those puppets kept on singing that same song over and over and over again. I thought that would be a happy place to live, don't you think? Daddy looked at me a real long time. And he put his head down on the table and he started knocking it on the edge. Mother pulled him up from there. They went in the hall and did more whispering. After a while, Mother called me. Called to me from her bedroom. Junie B, could you pick up the phone, please? It's your grandpa. He wants to talk to you for a minute. I picked up the phone. Hello. Hello yourself, a little girl, said my grandpa, Frank Miller. What's up? Up to this morning. I'm moving today, I told him. Grandpa Miller uh, sounded upset. Moving, he said. Oh, no, you can't be moving. If you move, then you won't be able to come over to my house on Saturday. I crinkled up my eyebrows at him, cause this conversation smell fish, that's why. Yeah, only how come you want me to come to your house, I asked. And how come it has to be on Saturday? Because Saturday is the day I do my work around here, remember? He said, you're still my little helper, aren't you? I thought, very careful. Yes, I said. On the count of sometimes I helped grandma fix stuff. It's called odd jobs, I think. Are you doing odd jobs? I asked him. Is that why you want me to come here? Come there? Sure. I'm doing odd jobs, said my grandpa, but I can't do them without my helper, can I? You're the one who wears the tool belt, aren't you? I smiled, very proud. Because Grandpa Miller's tool belt is the best thing I love. It has a zillion tools hanging off of that thing. It wrapped around me two whole time. And I don't even cave in. Just then, Grandpa Miller made his voice real quiet. You haven't even heard the best part yet. Guess what I'm going to be fixing? I whispered back at him. What? Then Grandpa said uh, for me to hang on a minute. On account of he wanted to close his door or else my grandma might hear. If your grandma hears, then she'll want to be my helper instead of you, he said. I waited very patient. Ready, he said. Ready, I said. Okay, I'm going to be fixing the uh, upstairs toilet. Just then my mouth came all the way open. Because fixing the upstairs toilet is a dream come true, that's why. Are you going to take the lid off the top, Grandpa? And are you going to keep flushing it and flushing it? And are you going to watch all the waters go out of that thing? I asked, sure I am. Of course I am. That's half the fun of fixing the toilet, right? Right, I said, very excited. Plus also, I love the big bowl that floats on the top. Me too. I love the big ball too. And so I can't count on you. Can I? You and I have a date on Saturday, right? I thought some more. Yeah. Only I think there's something you forgot, Grandpa. What? What did I forget, little girl? 
I raised my eyebrows at that silly head. You forgot that I'm moving today. The end. <laughs>